Tying up a trot line. <laughs> hey folks, welcome to the shop. My name's Sean, and this is a series where we just talk about stuff out here in my, uh, my shop that I've collected over the years or held on to, as in the case of these Mustad O'Shaughnessy trot line hooks. And there's some of my original trot line tags from 1978. See, I grew up on one of the Tennessee uh, TBA lakes and uh, Cherokee Lake, which is in the Holston River impoundment. And my dad had a boat dock and my responsibility during the days uh, of the week was to run the boat dock and, uh, and I did. And uh, every morning when I'd get up early, I'd see uh, this feller disappear out into the morning fog in an old homemade wooden flat bottom boat and uh he'd come back about noon or so and he'd have that boat just loaded down to the gunnels with the biggest old blue catfish uh, and uh, and that's how he made his living he was a commercial fisherman fishing for blue catfish using trot lines well one morning after i watched him do it for you know for a couple of months i got up on my nerve and i went over there i was in high school and uh, and i asked him if he'd show me how to do it. And to my surprise, he told me that he would. Uh, Gus Isom was his name. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, let me move this out of the way. That's my uh, my son's band, Mountain Soul, playing my song trot line uh, in the background uh, that you hear there that I wrote about this story that I'm gonna tell you a little bit about right now uh, today. But anyway, Gus uh, was, uh, it was uh, just a heck of a fisherman. And uh, so, uh, so long story short, I got my stuff together and uh, got out there with him. And he showed me how he caught bait using a throw net uh, and how he would tie up his uh, trot line. And I, I talk about that in the song even a little bit. Uh, but he taught me how to tie it up and taught me how to put them out and where to put them out. Uh, and I uh, started catching fish and one day when we were out there he you know I think he appreciated having me as a helper there for a while um, he started telling me his life story and he and he pretty much told me the whole story which was a fascinating story and I've been working on some projects uh, with some people down some uh, people down in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky uh, about this including a textbook because his his story exemplifies kind of the uh, the black uh, struggle uh, during that time, um, that, you know, pre, well, right post-civil rights, but it was pre-civil rights when it all went down. You see, as we were out there fishing one day, um, Gus pointed over uh, to this one particular stretch near Poor Valley Creek, uh, and uh, there was a, the remains of an old silo there for whatever reason. T TVA blew out all the houses and barns and left the foundations, and they left the silos, and they stand like sentinels on the lake banks. Uh, and uh, and he pointed over that way and he said, hey, Sean, you see that silo over there? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, that's very near where my daddy's farm was. Uh, and I said, oh, you grew up here? And he said, yeah. He said uh, that um, we were here when they built a lake. And uh, and he went on to tell me the whole story uh, and how they'd moved on to somewhere else to Knoxville and took a factory job and his dad died. Uh, and uh, he knew how to fish. So he built his old flat bottom boat and he started trot lining. Uh, and I just thought it was a really cool story, you know, that Gus Isom had, uh, had done that. He'd, he'd figured out how to work the water over the land that he once worked. And that's what spawned the song and, uh, and got me thinking about it. And it turns out that his story just, you know, is, is a fantastic story. And, and, and I'll have more to say about that in the future. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, he, he, he taught me how to tie these trot lines. And, uh, you know, we've got a blue cat invasion here on Chesapeake Bay right now. Now, I remember back in 1970s um, when uh, they got going strong in Tennessee, uh, the, the, everybody was worried that it was going to be an environmental disaster, uh, and it turned out not to be. And I hope that's the case here on the Chesapeake Bay. I think sometimes we get a little bit too worried about, uh, about these invasive fish um, um, because uh, they, they in, usually, the way it goes is everything's gonna change and that's just the way nature works. Uh, and so uh, they may or may not cause as much problems as we think they're gonna cause and I guess that remains to be seen right now. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, they will let you catch them. So it only costs $15 for a commercial trot line and license uh, here on Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Uh, now I don't know all the rules and regulations. I know you got to use uh, circle hooks and this is not a circle hook. That's a Mustad O'Shaughnessy hook um, with a with a wide gap 
uh, a loop on it so you can put your line through there so it'll fit a trot line through it um but uh but now i know you got to use circle hooks and i believe you can have 1200 feet of line here and uh and you want you you know you have your hook spaced out but you can get a whole lot of hooks on 1200 feet all right my limit back in the 70s and 80s was uh 100 foot i could have 100 100 foot i could have more than 100 hooks but you don't really want more than 100 hooks on a 100 foot line i'll tell you why here in a few minutes when i brush show you more about how to tie these up uh, but like i say i don't know all the rules and regulations about it and so it, it would pay you to look it up but you know for a 15 dollars commercial fishing license it might be worth it to get into uh commercial trot lining uh, above the bay bridge uh in maryland or, or wherever and in a lot of states allow trot lining it's not the most um uh, uh it, it's not it it's a it's a fun way to fish but i wouldn't call it you know the most sporting way to fish but if you're just trying to put meat in the boat that's probably a way to do it uh, it's a good way to do it anyway especially for blue catfish so so let me show you a little bit more about how to do this so first of all what i'm doing is i'm taking uh, a, 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 this is a dropper line so i cut a bunch of these about the same size you want them to be about the same size uh, all through and then take my hook and so the 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 dropper line it's also called a snood the snood line uh you go through there and just put one knot right on the end of it and that's just overhand knot just like you're tying your shoe put a knot on the end of it and then tie another overhead knot on this side cinch it down and that'll never come off on the other side just loop it over and you're tying a surgeon's loop but it's just real easy so look i just got it looped over and then i'm just going right through like that and that's it so that's your drop line right there and you can see that it's probably about a foot long maybe you know you can probably do them a little longer than that if you want to so they these all go when i'm just storing them in a piece of cardboard here that uh, some bottles came in and uh and so you want them not to get tangled up of course and a cooler works really good or a bucket or you know anything that you can put them in to keep them from getting tangled up and then you're going to tie your main line so your main line it, i like to use a little bit heavier line for the main line than i do for the drop line and this is just nylon twine and you notice that nylon twine comes in sizes this is i've got 18 and 24 here you might want to go a little bit heavier than 24 uh, even up to 30 would be all right so that's they these numbers go up consecutively uh compared uh, um, compared to the size of the line so the higher the number the heavier the line it's not real strong uh that number 24 is just uh, it says max weight 16 pounds i don't know if that's the same thing as 16 pound test but it's probably not uh but he here's what you do now what i'm going to do with my main line is i'm just going to tie loops along it and the way you tie those loops now you want these to be spaced out enough to where it's this it's longer the, than your droppers because otherwise your fish are going to get tangled up with each other and they'll twist off now a lot of people use swivels on trot lines uh, because a catfish will twist and you'll have some fish twist off but you know your your goal is just numbers uh and it's not unusual it wasn't unusual for me to catch a thousand pounds a day back during the when i was doing it and and you could do that easy on the chest beat. but this is just that other surgeon loop again so just just a loop like that so I got so I'm gonna I'm gonna put you know however long my line is I'm gonna make those loops and I'm gonna wrap it around a coke bottle or something uh, and take it out there. Now the trick is you want to stretch this tight, not like your like, like a crab and trot line that don't have to be too tight or anything. Uh, you want these to be tight for two reasons: it keeps it from tangling up, but also it will stretch then when it's real tight and it, it sets the hook for you a little easier. Uh, so, um, so you want a tight line and, and best thing to do, just get you a cinder blocks, not heavy enough. You need a great big rock, 50 pounds, you know, something really heavy and wrap it around it and tie it off and then 
go out there wherever you think you're gonna put your trot line and drop it in. Don't matter how deep it is, although I would suggest that you don't go too deep here in the chest beat because the water gets dead. There's not enough oxygen to have to get too deep. But drop it in, uh, drop your rock in, make sure that you put, have tied you a jug on there. So your jug, just use a milk jug. Um, tie your milk jug on there uh, and uh, however deep you want it. I think it has to be 10 feet deep in Maryland and I would run them shallower than that. Blue catfish will feed shallow. Uh, but, um, but uh, you know, in Maryland, I think you got to run them 10 feet deep. They don't want any conflicts with recreational boaters and stuff. You know, get tangled up in a trot line. Uh, and, then, and then stretch it. Stretch it really tight. Go all the way to the other end. You've got another big rock, 50-pound rock on that end. Tie your jug on there, too. Stretch it with your outboard motor just till you can't hold it no more and drop it. And so that line's gonna go straight to the bottom or however deep it'll go, however your jug lines are, uh, and it'll be tight. And so then you come along and you just run it back and that's when you put your hooks on. And so I've got my tight line here. I'm just gonna loop that hook right through there like that. And then take my loop that I tied on the other end, put that over the hook. That's just like a Palomar knot. Pull that tight. Come on now. <laughs> and there's my drop line. There's my trot line. I'm gonna do that all the way out. Put my jugs on however deep I want it. You can run it on the bottom if you want to, but like I say, blue catfish do feed up in the water column and you got it. And that's how you tie up a trot line. Well, thank you for visiting the shop and that's this week's episode. I hope you'll tune in next time. We'll talk about something else. No telling what. Probably be fishing, but it might be something else. You never know what we're going to get into out here. Thank you for visiting. Your likes are much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will because I drop these things uh, uh, periodically and don't always uh, announce it anywhere else. I appreciate you tuning in and let's go fishing.